Tim Sandal back with you with another video and there's lots of strange things going round at the moment. Um, I wonder what this can be representing. Not quite sure I know um, but yeah lots of uh, strange puffs they look a bit like viruses but anyway the um, focus of the video with all these various falling objects popcorn not sure about that is supposed to represent airflow visualization and that's the theme of this week's video so let's get to the video hello welcome to this week's video which follows on from the previous video which was about unidirectional airflow and this video is about airflow visualization studies which is the way that we can see what's happening with the um, airflow itself okay so first of all why airflow visualization studies well it's an activity that helps us to assess airflow design so we're looking at the grade A or ISO class 5 environment and also the surrounding environment and we're visualizing this by means of fogging or the generator, generation of smoke and a successful airflow design has two key meanings it's about effective contamination control in the clean room and efficient air delivery to the clean room and to maintain effective contamination control for a particular clean room we want to have a large quantity of air flowing in a direction that helps to maintain contamination and within grade A or ISO class 5 that's a unidirectional airflow so this kind of feeds into the previous um, video and there are some key factors air system efficiency the activity that's taking place and the degree that might disrupt the airflow, airflow rate, um, and other key factors which we'll have a look at in a second. But also it's important to remind ourselves why we're doing airflow visualization studies. And the key thing is um, it's a requirement in EU GMP Annex 1 and the FDA aseptic processing guidance and also a recommendation of the International Clean Room Standard ISO 14644 Part 3. So airflow studies can demonstrate quite a lot of information and this can relate to contamination control in assessing whether airflows are drawing potentially contaminated air towards the critical zone or whether certain objects in the airstream can themselves cause contamination by forcing air to change direction or just to uh, circulate round and round and round. And in addition, the analysis of the results, results obtained can also be beneficial for the selection of sample sites and also perhaps sample frequencies and also for understanding and refining personnel procedures and the material flow into an aseptic processing area. So we can look at the results of airflow studies and make modifications or at least be further aware of the different risk factors that are involved. And airflow studies are normally performed either using a smoke pencil or a smoke generator, depending upon how much smoke is required for the study. And this itself relates to the equipment or process that's being examined. And we want to take careful note of air direction and air velocity. And there's various things to examine and some examples are we want to demonstrate say the difference between an at-rest state and an in-use state and the direction of unidirectional flow in relation to the critical zone and ideally we want to see it carrying any particles away from the objects we're most concerned about. We also want to demonstrate the impact of operator interventions and other personnel activity and to show the impact of how equipment operates and also to demonstrate the setup of equipment as well. And we also uh, want to examine um, the unidirectional airflow and we want to show that the air is smooth and free from disturbances which could be small temporary vortexes or eddies and also that it's unimpaired. And in surrounding clean rooms you want to look at turbulent flow and uh, here we want to take note of um, any instabilities in the air 
and we want to make sure that the air can hold particles before they're extracted and also the way that the surrounding room interacts with the critical zone. We want to avoid any contamination transfer and we want to watch out for any vortex regions or what's called wake regions that might present areas of contamination within the clean room that we might be concerned about. There's also the concept of streamlines as well. So when examining airflow, streamlines also need to be noted. And a streamline is defined as the route that the air is taking. And a streamline will be the path that any contamination could take, what might be called a convective transport. So when a streamline meets an object and causes turbulence, or meets air which is turbulent, then contamination could potentially be dispersed, what might be called turbulent diffusion. And also the study of this kind of uh, precise level of direction helps us find regions of stagnation. And this can often occur in front of machinery um, and by work surfaces that are perpendicular to the airflow. And it's in these kind of locations that the airflow can be um, so problems can arise when we're conducting um, airflow studies and some of the problem factors I've listed on the slide can happen when heat rises from machinery and you can get that disruption of airflow. So if you open a hot autoclave for example, you can then get more airflow disturbance. We can have obstructions preventing the supply of air from reaching critical areas or obstructions on machinery design in turning nice unidirectional flow into turbulent flow, which we don't want. Or we could have entrainment, where contamination is drawn into the clean air zone. Or we can have stagnant or turbulent areas that act as conduits for entry of contamination. Or when a person has to intervene in the critical zone, then what we don't want to see is any air rolling off the person and being directed into the critical zone. The air should still go over the person and out of the critical zone. So these are all important factors. It's also very important that we report our airflow studies. So we, have, we document it. We might have diagrams, video clips and so on. And airflow studies you know, can fail, but it's beyond just a simple pass-fail criterion because the criticality of adequate airflows in a pharmaceutical product manufacture um, requires a high level of scrutiny so we can truly understand the contamination control metrics at play. So, thank you for your attention. I'm Tim Sandal and this video has been about airflow visualization studies and remains for me to say Good luck with the rest of your day and I'll be back with you with another video quite soon. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.